All right, but nonetheless, you guys, here's the story. Here we here we go. Because the feds release a 250 plus pages of redacted documents on marijuana rescheduling recommendation detailing cannabis medical value. That's right. More than three months after the news leaked that the U.S. Health and Human Services Department, the HHS, was recommending that marijuana be moved to Schedule 3 under the Federal Controlled Substances Act, the CSA, the agency was finally released a... A, a trache of documents related to its recommendation and the detailed review it undertook on cannabis accepted medical value. Among the materials made public are correspondence from HHS officials to Drug Enforcement Administration's DEA Administrator Annie Milligram. That's a great name for her, Annie Milligram, as well as uh, explanations of the health agency's reasoning for the recommended change after conducting a required eight factor analysis under the CSA. Most pages are heavily redacted, however, and some were <laughs> totally withheld completely. The documents were posted online on Thursday by attorney Shane Pennington and Matt Zorn, co-authors of the blog on drugs. And Zorn previously submitted a request under the Freedom of Information Act FOIA to obtain these records. In a quote, he says, we haven't had a chance to wade through it all, the two lawyers wrote. But we are putting it up here now and we'll follow up as soon as we've studied everything more deeply, they say. In response to the FOIA request, HHS reviewed 252 pages of records, releasing just two pages in their entirety. Another 236 were redacted in part, while 14 pages were withheld completely. Uh, broadly, the documents outline new scientific information that came to light in recent years subsequent to an earlier denial of a rescheduling petition, which HHS suggests might now uh, necessitate rescheduling marijuana. In a quote, the current review is largely focused on modern scientific considerations on whether marijuana has a CAMU, which is C-A-M-U, currently accepted medical use is what that stands for, and on new epidemiological data related to the abuse of marijuana in the years since 2015 HHS, uh, the evaluation of marijuana under the CSA's eight-factor analysis. HHS also notes that it analyzed considerable data related to the abuse potential of marijuana, but added that it's a complicated consideration. <laughs> I bet it is. Determining the abuse Abuse potential of a substance is complex with many dimensions, HHS wrote, and no single test or assessment provides a complete characterization. Thus, no single measure of abuse potential is ideal. And that's in quotes from the HHS as well. Most subsequent pages of the document were withheld completely, and HHS's director of FOIA appeals and litigations said in a letter to Zorn that the sections were redacted pursuant to provisions of FOIA law that exempt intra-agency memorandums or letters that would not be available by law to a party other than an agency in litigation with the agency. <coughs> Excuse me. In October, HHS released a highly redacted version of the one-page letter from the health agency to DEA in response to public records requests by news organizations such as Marijuana Moment and lawyers including Zorn, which which uh, with the rescheduling recommendations now in the DEA's hands, many are watching closely for updates while the Congressional Research Services, CRS, recently conducted that it was likely that the DEA would follow the HHS recommendations based on past precedent. But DEA reserves the right to disregard with the health agency's advice because it has final jurisdiction over the CSA, you guys. That's right. Earlier this week, the governors of six states Colorado, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, and Louisiana sent a letter to President Joe Biden urging the administration to reschedule marijuana to end this to, by the end of this year. In a quote, rescheduling cannabis aligns with safe regulated product that Americans can trust, says the governor's letter, which points to a poll that found 88% of Americans support legalization for medical or adult use purposes. And in quotes, as governors, we might disagree about whether recreational cannabis legalization or even even cannabis use is a net positive, but we agree that the cannabis industry is here to stay. The, the states have created strong regulations and supporting the state regulated marketplace is essential for the safety of the American people. The office of Colorado Governor Jared Polis, who led the group letter, said rescheduling will not only alleviate the financial and safety concerns for businesses, but allow a thriving industry to play a full 
pivotal role in the American business environment. One of the first state officials to react to this HHS rescheduling recommendation, Polis told Biden in a letter in September that while he expects DEA will expeditiously complete its review and move marijuana to Schedule 3, the policy change may be coupled with further administrative and congressional action to promote health, safety, and economic growth. Meanwhile, six former DEA heads and former White House drug czars sent in a letter to Attorney General and the current DEA administrator voicing opposition to the top federal health agency's recommendation to reschedule marijuana. They also made a questionable claim about the relationships between drug schedules and criminal penalties in a way that could exaggerate the potential impact of the incremental reform. (laughs) Uh, Signatories include DEA and Office of National Drug Control Policy heads under multiple administrations led by presidents of both major parties and in October advocates and lawmakers who support cannabis reform uh, marked the one-year anniversary of Biden's mass marijuana pardon and scheduling directive this month by calling him to do more, including by expanding the scope of relief that his pardon had by expressly supporting federal legalization and two GOP senators, including the lead Republican sponsor of a marijuana banking bill that cleared a cure committee last month, recently filed, uh, filed new legislation to prevent federal federal agencies from rescheduling cannabis without without tacit approval from Congress. A coalition of 14 Republican congressional lawmakers, meanwhile, is urging the DEA to reject the top federal health agency's recommendation to reschedule marijuana and instead keep it in the most restrictive category under the CSA. And I must say, in this situation, I agree with these 14 Republican lawmakers and the DEA as far as keeping it as a Schedule 1 in lieu of moving it to Schedule 3. But I want to hear what you guys have to say. And this is Jason Beck for the Hi at 9 News. What do y'all think? I agree with you. I am not a fan of Schedule 3. I will recognize that your President Trump uh, did absolutely in in changing the rules because of hemp. CBD has failed the eight-factor test, and the DEA has to change its definition away from all constituents. Uh, I would like to draw our attention to the States Act 2.0. Uh, which removes cannabis from Schedule 1 and the DEA's purview entirely. Uh, if anyone is looking for something to support you're, rather than... You're, you're, you're talking schedule. about the States Reform Act, the Nancy Mace bill, right? The States Act 2.0. Uh, and actually, I don't... She... Hold on, let me pull it up for you, right? Okay. Here, I have it. Uh, It was Representative David Joyce, joined by four colleagues, Earl Blumenauer of Oregon, Brian Mast of Florida, Lori Chavez de Remer of Oregon, and Troy Carter of Louisiana, introduced a revised version of the Strengthening the Tenth Amendment Through Entrusting States Act, otherwise known as the States Act. As the name implies, the bill seeks to bring U.S. marijuana policy more in line with the Tenth Amendment and federalism, and it will remove marijuana as a substance covered by the Federal Controlled Substances Act. So it would deschedule cannabis? Yes, sir. And that is what we should still be asking for, in my humble opinion. Awesome. 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 Because if not, we're going to It just dropped this week, so you haven't heard about it yet. Maybe that should have been my news story. Mm. Damn it. No, it's let's, right. let's make, make sure we uh, we have that at the top of the week next week. Yes, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely want to talk about that because that's a that, that's a new bill that uh, sounds sounds interesting, and I'm glad to see some evolution on their parts uh, in in regards to this. Adam, where did you go? Oh, we we got some shit going on over here, Adam. I'm all the yeah. way over here. Yeah, don't worry. I'm don't all the way over here. Don't worry. We're moving you back in frame, bro. You're back. You're back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, dig- like I'm we're digging. We're sitting uh, in Dr. Mr. Talleyrand. Dr. Talleyrand. Yeah, the close up right on Dr. T right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was like that, sitting in Santa's lap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we we apologize for the inconvenience. And, 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 yeah, like, uh, 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 how, how long ago was this now? Like, was it six months they gave yeah. that uh, they, they gave that recommendation, man? Like, like, like I said yesterday, like the Republicans are picking up this, and um, if if Biden does not make a move, uh, one way or another, at least give some lip service uh, to to moving in one way or the other. Like, I, you know, 
45 is ever the opportunist, whether he believes in one thing or not. I don't think he believes in anything, yeah, but he does go with the sentiment of the crowd. He goes with what the crowd tells him to go with, and I could see him hijacking the cannabis argument. For the and, people. Um, For the people. Yeah, and, and what else is uh, uh, Joe Biden or the Democrats going to have as a positive note going into next year's election? I don't know, health rights for women, but also, um, <laughs> just as the only one. Yeah, good point. Uh, yeah, yeah, good, good point. Yeah, that's, just, that's, just saying. That's, that's a huge it's, one. A huge it, one. It, it, yeah, it, it, it definitely uh, uh, matters. But uh, we'll find out on Monday because that is when this is due. Monday the 12th. Well, Stay tuned. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Look, at, we're going to have some spice to talk about. You got any thoughts on this, Dr. T or Dr. Mark? Oh, it sounds like bullshit lip service to me. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's some spice right there. Yeah, it's nice and yeah. cold up there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> up the there frozen in, in New tundra England. of Vermont. Yeah. Is that Latin, uh, Dr. Mark? I just it sounds scientific. Sorry, right. say that again? I asked if that was Latin from your medical training. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just seems like, you know, everyone's got a bill in Congress and everyone's talking about, you know, rescheduling. You know, rescheduling is not is not feasible. It tells you how not clued in they are because you can't dispense schedule three substances in the way that the the cannabis industry works right now. So they would have to make an exception for the dispensing of schedule three cannabis. They're not gonna do right? that. And, They're not gonna do and that. And schedule three drugs are made by FDA registered facilities that have yep. GMP protocols in place. And there's really few and far between in the cannabis industry. And, and people are striving to get to GMP, but GMP, there's a high economic hurdle to it because it requires a lot of, um, internal analytics and testing capabilities that you know these cannabis companies just can't afford because they're just running from pillar to post right now just to stay in business let alone try to get GMP certified so um, wh where they should be focusing this is on the hemp derived cannabinoids because there indeed these things aren't extracted from plant sources these things are being made as active ingredients that are being included into products without the regulatory oversight that's mandatory in the rest of the cannabis industry. Mm -hmm. So there's really not a level playing field. And if you believe the economics, the um, larger addressable market of the psychoactive hemp just completely dwarfs the the cannabis industry. All the, all the state uh, businesses combined can't even hold a candle. It's like an order of magnitude difference. Mm -hmm. There's billions of dollars being made in this psychoactive cannabis or psychoactive hemp thing. And, you know, all the government did was kick the can down the road. Yep. So exactly. this thing is yep. just going to continue exactly. for another year. And, and I can't believe I'm saying this, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm with the DEA on this, and I hope that they don't reschedule at all. I hope that they... That, that that's that's my hope i do not want to see cannabis move to schedule three because it'll be an absolute nightmare for everybody but on that we got to keep this train rolling we 